I guess uh, when we talk safety, we quite quickly move into terms like lost time injury frequency rate and total reportable injury frequency rate and severity frequency rate. But I guess behind those figures, there are some very real impacts on real people and families. And, um, you know, we've got to look beyond their numbers. When something bad happens, such as vitality, you know, the impacts on the people involved and the impacts on the family are forever. And uh, in some cases, when a family loses their main income earner, the, the, the consequences for that family can be, you know, extremely devastating. Look, safety is it's, it's not a game. You know, when something goes wrong, you can't press the rewind button. And all you can do is pick up the pieces. So, why is safety important to me? Um, so what's this picture all about? We had an employee called Graham, um, Graham Brown, and he was a driller and worked for Downer for 39 years. Um, and I last talked to Graham, he, uh, his ambition was to, to get to that 40 year service and then retire. Graham uh, was regarded by his peers as a master driller. He'd uh, worked all around New Zealand in some iconic projects like Manapuri and also Antarctica. He, um, Graham was fatally injured on a, on a downer work site on the 19th of October 2012 while clearing a, a rock slide on the Milford Road. So long story short, um, Graham was uh, hit on the side of his hard hat by a hose clamp which uh, flew off when there was a catastrophic failure of an air hose. Um, the crew on site did all they can to save uh, Graham, but uh, unfortunately he uh, passed away at the site. So the, the people you see pictured here are Angela and, and Richard, and uh, they're Graham's adult children. What you don't see in the picture is uh, you know, more than 50 direct family members of Graham and, uh, and workmates who uh, unveiled a plaque on the site that Graham was fatally injured a year after his death. You know, I'm, 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 I, I'm absolutely humbled by the way that um, Graham's wife Liz coped with the accident and the way that the family coped with the accident. But it's not always the case, you know. I guess when you as a leader of your business have to front up to a family and uh, explain why a loved one is not coming home or explain why that loved one is in a hospital with life-threatening injuries. You know, and as a leader you should. How comfortable would you feel talking to his family, to their family? And um, let me assure you, for everyone involved, it's a far from pleasant experience. And uh, from my experience, it was one that will stay with you for the rest of your life. Last year, 75 families experienced the situation of a loved one not coming home. And uh, the building and construction industry compared, you know, basically contributed significantly to those stats. So uh, look, the bottom line, in my opinion, is uh, everyone does deserve to go home safe and sound after the end of each work shift. And that is why safety is, uh, means a lot to me as a leader of my business. So how do I lead safety at Downer? I mean, um, I always like to personalise uh, safety in my business. And, um, you know, we, uh, we always say, like, how comfortable would you be with um, your children working on the work sites under your control? And um, just remember that, you know, the other uh, people working on those work sites are other people's children. And, um, you know, I think that's the way you should think about safety and safety performance. You know, there are people behind those, there are real people behind those numbers and, 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 and the impacts uh, are real on those people. So, you know, safety is um, as important as profit. And um, I'm sure that um, if not today, safety will be a ticket to operate. 
Um, Downer operates a, um, a lot in the mining sector, and if you don't have certain safety standards and certain safety performance, you will not even be allowed to price the work. So, um, you know, safety is a licence to operate. Therefore, it must be first on every meeting agenda. I guess I've got a very large business, over 5,000 employees, so how do you get the message out consistently across such a wide audience? And how do you get it out to the front line in a way that you want to get the message to be uh, understood? So we, we use monthly videos, and, um, and we have first things first, we have a safety moment on the, on, the, on the video, and we share good stories and we share bad stories. So, pictured are my fingers, and um, I'm a pretty avid woodworker. I guess I use it most of the time for de-stressing. I've bought most of my own furniture over the years. On a Sunday morning, I suspect I didn't have my mind on the job, wasn't using the right tools, and I chopped the tip of my finger off. So, um, this is what I fronted up to my business with. Yep, I'm just like you. I'm human like everyone else. I, uh, I sit on my soapbox and preach safety, and yet I've done the same stupid things as uh, some other people. So I um, really had to eat my own safety and medicine in that situation. So I think you know the real key learnings that I guess out of that thing is um, safety is not something that just happens at work. You don't just turn up at work, turn on your safety um, switch, and it'll all be okay. Safety is as uh, is as important at home, and um, you know the reality is there are more people injured at home than there are in the workplace in New Zealand. So, um, you know, safety is ever-present, and um, I guess that's a bit contrary to some of the Kiwi psyche, but it has to change. And when you run a, a multiple cruise or a large business, I guess um, it's really important that you get, um, yeah, I think basically you have to trust other people to do the job. But in my business, you know, you've got to trust, but you also got to verify. And occasionally you as a leader have got to get out and you've actually got to see for your own eyes um, what's actually and what's really going on. You know, you've got to ask the questions, you've got to observe, you know, and, you, and um, essentially you've got to use your judgment and experience. So, um, yeah, the numbers are one thing, but you really have to visit the site to see what's really going on. When accidents happen, it's really important that um, you try and understand or find out why those accidents really happen or find the root cause. It's not a blame apportioning exercise, you know. And invariably you do find something and when you do find that, that root cause or root causes, then you've got to get that messages out to your business and get it out quickly. And um, I mean, there's always something you can learn and apply and do differently. Once you've done that, I guess you've also got to make sure that um, you know, whatever corrective action you've requested is actually implemented in the field and followed up. So what gets managed gets measured. Um, th th this is um, a, a quick graph of the um, safety stats of the downer skirt team. And, um, you know, so stats I think are very good for monitoring trends. And this is an example where with Downer, the Downer skirt team had the worst safety performance of all, this, um, all the, the skirt teams. And um, an unacceptable performance, I might add. So um, with a bit of, bit of focus, um, the team turned it around. So those, uh, those figures are now um, our first equal uh, in terms of safety performance. So, um, and you know, that took a lot of hard work. And uh, some of the key things that we, uh, that we really implemented are, are really on this slide here. So um, who really drives safety performance, you know? Um, is safety performance related to the number of safety professionals we employ? If we employ more safety professionals, will we get a better safety result? Well, certainly my experience that uh, that's not the case. And uh, I have a view that you know, the more safety professionals you have, the more backside wiping that happens in your business. You know, um, they do make a difference and they are an important part of the team. But the reality is that safety must be owned by operations. And if you want to create lasting and improving safety 
figures in your business, then operations must own safety on their sites. I think it's really important that the frontline leaders, the foremen, supervisors, the engineers who are actually on the site, drive safety on their sites. If you don't have their buy-in, if they don't think it's important, well then nothing's going to change. So um, and in the skirt team, that was a, a key driver and they really took ownership and, and made a difference. Look, there are many risks on our sites. You know, uh, sometimes you can count, you know, tens, twenty, thirty different types of risk, but not all risks are equal. And um, I think the real focus has got to go on managing those critical risks. What are those risks that if we don't get right, that could lead to a significant or serious injury or worse? Now take for example in our business or any roadworks sort of business, you know, you've always got a lot of people in plant and reversing vehicles. So I guess some people might think, okay, PPE, make sure everyone wears uh, a day glow jacket. Well, I guess that does make a difference in terms of the ability for people to see the person, but it is an absolute last line of defence only. And the same with Graham's hard hat, you know. That was his last line of defence and it didn't save him. So. Um, you know, you've got to think about, OK, reversing vehicles, what can we do? How can we engineer the process or plan the way we do the work such that we don't need to reverse trucks? Or we can keep people away from the plant. Now, we've found with good planning and with the involvement of the team, invariably, in most cases, you can remove the need for reversing vehicles or if you can't do that, at least that process is tightly controlled. So planning makes all the difference. I think safety messages, safe work practices, procedures, um, I think a lot of our uh, safety professionals like to um, convince us how smart they are and they write these huge sort of safety procedures. And I've seen in my business one that's over 80 pages long. Now, I'm not going to read an 80-page safe work statement, and uh, I don't expect my people to. One of the key things the, um, the Downer crew did on the, on the skirt project was produce a whole lot of 101 guides to how we do cable location, how we do um, other things. And they are very much pictorial-based, and they're written in a way that our front line can read them and understand them, and that's made a huge difference. So, um, you know, I guess the old, old principle, keep it simple, is really, really applies in the safety sense. I guess safety for me is, is, is integral to the way that we plan and price work. It's not something that we think about later, you know. And, um, you know, in, a, in all our businesses, we do a lot of stuff day in, day out. And we do it in multiple parts of the business. And I think that the challenge for our business and for everyone else's business is to get some consistency in the way we do those things. And when we get consistency in the way we do things, it also incorporates all the smart ideas from around the business and also incorporates how we can do the, do the job safely. And I think when you've got that nailed, you can call that operational excellence. And operational excellence to me is that you do the job right the first time and you do it safely and the customer's happy with the result on time to quality and to the right standards. And this is going to make it, this will be a lot easier for us to train to too, you know. If this is the procedure, it's very easy for people to be trained to that procedure. Look, um, above anything else, don't leave anything to chance. You know, you've got to look after your staff. And all I ask you to do, you know, go out to your work sites and make a difference. So thank you.